Number 15. Write a balanced equation for each of the following nuclear reactions. And then we have the production of C14, ooh, that's radioactive, uh, from N14 by a neutron bombardment. Okay, so we're dealing with nuclear reactions, which means that we have to write everything in, nu uh, well, they call it nuclide notation, right? Or nuclide notation. Now, we just have to figure out, out of these two atoms, who's on the reactants and who's on the products. But if we look into the wording, they say that there's going to be the production of the carbon-14. And if you're producing or you're, you know, doing the production of carbon-14, that means that this guy has to be one of the products, right? Production products, which means that if you're producing this from the nitrogen, you already had this guy. So that means that the nitrogen has to be a reactant. So at least we know who's on the right side, the products, and who's on the left side. So let's start that off. Now, for nucleide notation, you have to have those three boxes, which are right here. Let's start off with the reactants, right? So the reactant is going to be that nitrogen. Now, they, they told us that we're dealing with nitrogen. That's what's going in the big blue box, always the lettering or the element or the atom or the particle. And now the top numbers are always going to be your atomic mass. And the bottom number is always going to be your atomic number. Now just know that for every atom, your atomic mass can change, but the number cannot. Now in this case, they told us that we have a top number of 14. So that's beautiful. But now they didn't tell us what the atomic number was, but that's because Every single atom has its own unique atomic number. We have to go on the periodic table to find out what that number is. So we go on the periodic table, I find out where nitrogen is, and here it is, voila, right? The atomic number for nitrogen is always going to be that whole number there, which is 7. So we got this guy. Now, let's just write out the nucleide notation for the carbon, which is on the product side. So we're dealing with capital C, C for carbon. That's an ugly C, that's better. They're also telling us that we have 14 as the mass. So 14 on top. And once again, they didn't tell us the atomic number. So I got to search for my periodic table for where carbon is. And it's right next door. And that number is six. So we did this, we did the nitrogen, now we have to attack the neutron bombardment. Now, if you're being bombarded with something, that means too much stuff is coming in, right? If you're being bombarded with information, too much information is coming in. And always with this wording, if they're talking about a bombardment, that means that your particle is coming in on the reactant side. That's what you're starting with. So the particle is on reactant side. But now they could have said proton bombardment, they could have said electron, they could have said alpha particle, right? But in this case, they said neutron. So we just need to know what a neutron is. Well, let's get out the notation. We know that it's on the, the reactant side. So here's my three letterings, right? And a neutron has the lowercase n. Lowercase n for neutron. So we'll do it in both steps, right? And for particles, just know that your atomic number on the bottom is the charge. So a proton, it would be a plus one, or you could just put a one. For an electron, it would be a minus one. But for a neutron, it's neutral, which means that there's no charge. So there's a bottom number for zero there. But now... For atomic mass, keep in mind that the atomic mass is protons plus neutrons. If you're dealing with just one neutron, you have no protons, but you just have one neutron. So your atomic mass will be one for the one neutron. So that's that. So just know that that's what a neutron always is. It's a zero on the bottom and a one up on top. But now we just have to make sure that the top numbers are balanced 
and the bottom ones are balanced. And as I see here, I have 14 plus 1, which is 15. You could treat this yield sign as the equal sign. But I have 15 on the left side, and I only have 14 on the right, which means that I need to add one more piece to the puzzle. This is the missing link. Generally with these, you will be adding probably more particles than what is stated in the problem. So let's work from top to bottom. Always work, you know, do your top numbers, do your bottom numbers, they're separate. So just like we said here, right, we said that 14 plus 1, so we'll write that down, 14 plus 1 has to equal 14 plus that x value. And I mean, you know, we can just say 15 equals 14 plus x, solve it out. You probably already know that x equals a 1. So we got a 1 up on the top. Now let's do the bottom. 7 plus 0, so we could say 7 plus 0 equals the 6 plus the x value, because that's what we're trying to solve for. And 7 equals 6 plus x. We know that x has to equal 1. But now the question is, who is this, right? Well, if you have numbers for both the top and the bottom number, that means that it's got to be somewhere on the periodic table. And you could always use your bottom atomic number to find out who the atom is, because every single element has its own unique atomic number. So go find out number one. It's the first element on the periodic table. It is the hydrogen. And just know that this is the same thing as a proton. So this is a neutron, and this is a proton. So could you have, you know, put a P here? That's fine with me. doesn't matter. You'll get full credit for both of them. And that's it. This whole thing is your balanced equation. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this helped. Uh, yeah. Give me, a, give me a heads up in the, in the uh, comments if this helped you or not. Love talking to you guys. And I hope you're doing well out there. We opened up memberships on the channel if you want to be a member. Uh, thank you so much for considering. And I hope you have a great day. Good luck on those tests and quizzes. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.